time in the music unit was when music videos were still relatively new and exciting and ready to roll, which was, you know, the top 20 in effect. That, that was like a, a number one show. I mean, you wouldn't get that now. Everything's changed and, you know, music's on YouTube, so on and so forth. But yeah, back then it was very special. And Radio With Pictures, that was the Sunday night show. It was for alternative indie type music. Radio With Pictures was such a classic show. We had great hosts in Karen Hay and then Richard Driver. And I mean, I was interviewing really legendary rock stars. I interviewed people like Mick Jagger, B.B. King, Joni Mitchell. I was young and I didn't even think about how incredible that was to be sitting talking to those people. I look back now and think, but at the time I just kind of, you know how you do when you're young, I just kind of went, oh, I'm talking to Mick Jagger. That's cool, <laughs> it's fine. So yeah, great job, best job ever. 345 Live, I came in as producer in the second year of the show's existence, so I didn't set it up. It was a great little kids show, afternoons, a linking show around insert shows. Uh, we did, you know, pop rock star interviews, we did, you know, things about health, we did things about pets, we did everything. Uh, and it was a really good show, actually, a really good show to be your first show as a producer. And I was very lucky, I had two particularly good front people in Hinamar Elder, who hasn't stayed with television, she actually went on and became a doctor, but Phil Kogan, who's gone on to become, you know, an international megastar doing Amazing Race, and they both, even at that very early stage, were great, so I had a great year with those two. Started very, very, very tough. We got that real thing that shows get sometimes where we sort of became the media whipping boy and because we were doing late news in an irreverent way and TVNZ hadn't really done that before, we were basically going to be the decline of Western civilization. <laughs> Funnily enough, it didn't fall, but you know. Uh, so that kind of, for the first few months, it was really tough. We were really under siege. But then that lovely thing happened, sort of, I don't know, maybe a third to halfway through the year, everything started to change. People started to accept that actually the show was kind of cool and it was doing interesting things. Marcus was very strong in that quirky sort of role. And yeah, we actually had a really great year of doing Newsnight. And then I actually left because I got offered another job. Running the internal production unit at TVNZ, it's, it's obviously, not, obviously it's not an easy job, but it's quite challenging. You've got a lot of different shows, a lot of different people working on the shows, and you are sometimes the meat and sandwich between you know what your producers are doing, what programming want you to be doing, audiences, ratings, all of those things. I think I was quite lucky in that when I first got the job, it was only a couple of programs, and the unit grew and grew as I got more experienced. So it was growing, and I was kind of growing to match. So I think that was good. It, you know, I was learning, and, and we were developing the, the unit at the same time. But yeah, it, it certainly was not without its challenges. And while you know, shows like Maggie's Garden Show and Open Home and Taste New Zealand were great successes, we also had a few shows that fell by the wayside, as you do in those kinds of roles. Mucking In was quite a special show for me in that it was my format, my original format, which not all the shows my unit did were. They all had a bit of me in them, but that one was my format. It took me a really long time to get it to happen, and that's often the case. We, we stayed in the development area for some time. And actually, it didn't end up getting made and screening till I had actually left the production unit and gone upstairs to commissioning. But the nice thing was, I'd always liked that format, that thing of, yes, it's a gardening show, but it's rewarding a member of the community who's amazing and all the community want to do something nice for them. It's just such a nice, goodwill, feel-good show. And so I was very pleased that I did finally get it to happen. And then it became a really successful show that ran for about 10 years, partly because Jim Mora hosted it and he's really good. But, it, you know, it was just very rewarding having loved the concept, worked ages to get it to happen, and then, yeah, it really flew. I'm a really positive person, I like to work in a really constructive way and I actually found a job where 90% of the time you're saying no to people, really tough. Uh, so I, I don't think in that sense I'm a, national, a natural commissioner, but I did enjoy my time there in some ways and I did get to make some great shows happen. I was very pleased to get the entire history of New Zealand music made in the Give It A Whirl series because that's very close to my heart, so that was a particular one I was very fond of during that time.
One of the things that was really great for me about working on NZ On Screen is that I was able to get really great content on there, get it going, get it strong, so it can then be handed over to, you know, Catherine Quirk, who's doing it now, you know, whoever, if Catherine doesn't do it forever. And, and I feel that, I felt that was quite a responsibility. I don't, I don't want to make it too grand, but, you know, it is, a, it is a service for all of New Zealand. So you feel like you need to do that well, have it in good shape. And I think I did that. I think I'm lucky in that I think I have a good instinct for what people like and want to see. I lived long enough to have a good appreciation of what content was out there. And so I felt when I left that I was leaving it in good shape. And I think that was something I could feel proud of. I think I've been incredibly lucky to stumble into being a television producer, and I did stumble into it. But actually, it suits me perfectly. I think I was also incredibly lucky in that I got kind of the golden years of production, the years where there was some selection process, so it wasn't just open slather, but you know, budgets were pretty good and we could still do really interesting things. What I'm hoping as the industry fragments and changes and becomes more online and all of those things is that those same content skills knowing what people are interested in what they like will still work you know no matter what pipe the product is coming down be it a television screen online a phone whatever in the end you still have to know about content so hopefully that will Stand me in good stead till I'm a hundred.